Hello, my name is Nick, and at the end of August 2022, I had a stroke. I thought I'd make some videos to explain uh, what happened to me and um, chart my recovery and recuperation from that stroke. Um, this is the part where, in a Hollywood script, it would say, Hospital Interior Night. A mild-mannered civil servant surrounded by beeping machines when all of a sudden he is awoken by a manic cry. It, 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 it's me! Well, yeah, that sort of is in the script. But we'll get to that a little bit later. So at this point, I'm lying in the hospital bed. A couple of nights after being uh, admitted, after having the stroke. Still very, very scared. Still not knowing what's going on. Having no idea how long I'm going to be in there. And I've mentioned in the first uh, video I'd never spent any time in hospital. And I didn't know how long this was going to last. I just knew I was in hospital for the foreseeable future. Um, I found it a very, very scary place to be, to begin with. Dark. At times the darkness was just all pervading. It was uh, felt like it was grabbing me. It wasn't helped by the fact that one, I wasn't allowed to get up. If someone seen me trying to get out of bed, any of the staff, they would have to come and get me and make sure I was put back in bed. Not that that was going to happen because two, I was incapable of getting out of bed. Um, the stroke affected the right hand side of my brain, which has made the left hand side of my body just stop working completely. So even if I wanted to get out of bed, I couldn't do. Um, my leg is working now, my arm is not working properly yet. There is some movement and I can wiggle my fingers, etc. But I still can't use it, which is annoying. But I don't let that frustration get to me. So while I'm lying in bed, the thing that was really getting to me though, I felt trapped. And at the same time, I was also wearing something called Floatrons which are these sort of socks, compression socks that you wear because um, you can't get up and walk you're in danger of having blood clots so you have compression socks that are connected to a machine and they just constantly will constrict, contract and then expand do that all night long on both legs around your calf muscles so you're feeling trapped anyway, but at the same time, this thing is grabbing you and it feels like someone is grabbing you and pulling you tight to the bed. And it was a horrible, horrible feeling. Um, I, I'll be honest, that first week I struggled mentally, very badly. And um, a lot of what I'm going to say, <laughs> I, I can't believe I'm going to tell you, and I can't believe I said this to psychologists, it sounds weird, but stick with it bear with me um, have you ever heard of the term mood hoover uh, for all the non-brits who are watching this hoover was the biggest selling vacuum cleaner brand in sort of the 60s and 70s I think so successful that to this day the majority of Brits don't call a vacuum cleaner a vacuum cleaner they just call it a hoover Anyway, mood hoovers are people that I've had lots of experience with over the years, especially in work environments. And what they do, they're normally bitter, horrible little people that cannot stand anyone who are showing any kind of happiness or a sense of energy or, or anything. So what they'll do is they'll pick away at that and try and drag that person down or hoover away any happiness and any uh, energy that you have to drag you down to their level. That's what makes them happy. Bitter, horrible people. Well, I think we all have that inside us. And the reason why is because I was in the hospital bed. At times, my own brain was acting as a mood hoover, trying to drag me into the dark recesses where I didn't want to go. So I had to fight against that. And I tend to visualise a hell of a lot of things. I find it easy to deal with. I don't know if it's the poet in me or the frustrated writer, but if I can visualise something, I find it easier to talk about or to deal with. So, for me, 
the mood hoover that was inside me it took the form of pigeons again like I say this sounds stupid and I was talking to a psych a trained professional psychologist about this but it was pigeons so grey drab functional but there's lots of them and they are constantly everywhere whirling round and these mood hoover pigeons would come during the night and would try and drag me to places I didn't want to go to places that I think in hindsight might have been dangerous for me so my ego and I'm going to keep on doing this and it looks stupid again my ego there's a sliver of my ego there which I visualised as this if you imagine drawing a, a lightning bolt it's the end of a lightning bolt a raggedy lightning bolt and it's made of gold and it goes down here that's my ego that's the part of my ego that I needed to fight back against uh, mental health problems in this case the nude hoover pigeons well that they came up with Nick the bird of paradise yeah I know stupid but and typical I'm an ugly man so I picked a bird of paradise the most beautiful and showy bird possible well he helped whenever the mood hoover pigeons would turn up Nick the bird of paradise would jump onto a branch hop up and down shaking his feathers and saying look at me look how beautiful I am look how interesting I am I deserve investigation don't look at them look at me now for that first week he fought off any feelings of um you know, insecurity, any feelings that I was getting dragged to places I didn't want to go to, it was him. And again, I spoke to the psychologist. I mentioned Nick the Bird of Paradise first, the mood hoover pigeons. Hearing those words come out of my mouth to a trained psychologist. Yeah. But what am I talking about? Shut up, soft lad. But I carried on. The following week, this morphed slightly. And that ego changed and I got it wrong to begin with I said that I was the reincarnation of Rick Mail I wasn't obviously I was alive for most of Rick Mail's life so I can't possibly be his reincarnation what I meant was that part of me there that part of my ego that was channeling the energy of Rick Mail the bits that we all loved about him that his ego his manic energy that need to be the funniest man in any room that need and desire to steal every scene he ever appeared in that that was what was needed and in the second week his energy became nick male and he used to jump up and that's where it, 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 it's me comes from like lord flash heart the mood hoover pigeons would turn up Nick Mail would jump up. No darkness allowed, not at all. More lights, more cameras, put them on me, 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 me. And he would protect me during those dark nights. It sounds stupid, but it worked. And I explained this to the psychologist, like I say, hearing those words come out of my mouth. Nick the Bear of Paradise versus the Mood Hoover Pigeons. I am the reincarnation of Rick Mail. But I'm talking to a trained professional. She's going to put me in a room with padded wallpaper and I'm never going to get out. But thankfully, the psychologist understood where I was coming from. I was actually quite impressed that I had that wherewithal to see deep inside myself, to see where the problems were coming from and to discover something that I had that could fight against it. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy that I discovered it. I'm happy to talk about it and I'm happy to take it forward for any future issues that I have. Um, the title of this uh, particular video is Mental Health versus Mental Strength. I think I left hospital mentally stronger than I went into it. I certainly think I was stronger mentally than most people in that hospital because I was willing to submit to idiocy for protection. And by that, it sounds stupid what I'm talking about. And I think other people wouldn't even admit to having these thoughts, let alone talking about it to people. But it helped, and it helped protect me. And I think it, do, it can do the same for anyone else. You don't have to be in a hospital bed. If you're lying at home in the dark at night and you're starting to have these feelings that things are getting too much, speak up, speak to someone. 
and do whatever it takes to get through. For me, it's that. That got me through. That sliver of ego, Nick Mail and the Bird of Paradise. It's whatever it takes for you. What I liken it to is um, how many of us here, when we were children, had imaginary friends. You know, how many kids are around the world now, these days, who've got imaginary friends, and when they're in bed at night and it's dark and they're a bit scared, will reach out their arm and will grab the hand of that imaginary friend, and that will see them through the night. That's what I see it as. You know, as adults and as parents, we tell children that it's stupid to have an imaginary friend. And this is five minutes after we tell them about Father Christmas and the Tooth Fairy. You know, I don't think imaginary friends become a problem until they start writing on the walls with a sharpie. Until then, let the kids have that, because that's what they need to get through the night. And sometimes that's all we need. The imaginary friend, mine's there. You just need to find yours. So one of the main things I've taken away from all this is the need to address any problems that you've got. Speak to someone. That's one of the main things. Just acknowledge that you have a problem if this, things like this are affecting you. Speak to someone. Getting it off your chest really does help. Whether that's a healthcare assistant in hospital, a doctor, a nurse, a physio, someone that you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, or a family member or a friend. If you're having issues where you feel like your mental health's being affected, talk. It'll never do you any harm, that I can guarantee you. And it could end up being exactly what you need just to get things, to get the ball rolling, uh, to improve. For me, I mean, it, it was, it's that, it's the ego. It's letting the ego just get that little bit of free reign to fight against those demons. It might not be that way with you. It's whatever it takes for you to feel better about what's happening, to feel better about yourself and to deal with some of the issues that you have. Um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the recovery process and physios and things like that. But also, I'm going to talk about um, positive mental attitude I don't want to come across as one of these, you know, gurus or trainers and, you know, be happy all the time, be positive all the time, because that doesn't work at all. I'm just going to tell you what happened and what worked for me and what of an impact I had on other people through the attitude that I had. It's also the reason why I changed the name of the channel, because genuinely it's a hugely important thing for me. So I want to go into a bit more depth with that next time round. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed, liked or taken anything from this video, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, or if you've got any questions or comments, put them down below. I will try and get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, and don't forget, you only get one life. Don't throw it away.